Valley women go in for a massage only to be assaulted. All of them say it was by the same man. Yeah, only on ABC 15. They're warning the public and asking police why a potential serial predator still is not off the streets. Now, ABC 15 does not usually identify victims of sexual assault, but these women wanted to go public with their story in the pursuit of justice. Yeah, the story also contains descriptions of sex assault that may be difficult for some of you to hear. Here's ABC 15 Sonu Wasu. No, I just kept playing stop, 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 stop. Stephanie Trujillo remembers it like it was yesterday. So I was wiggling to my left side, just trying to throw myself off of the bed. It was May 17th when Stephanie says she walked into the home of a Sobador in Phoenix. He would penetrate his fingers into my vaginal area. Sobadores, popular in Latino culture, perform massages and other healing techniques. They're not licensed, but Stephanie says the 81-year-old seemed gentle and harmless until... He was like holding me down, couldn't move. Then the doorbell rang. Once he walked out that door, I got up, got my clothes, and just rushed out of the room. And he kept screaming to me, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. He was like, don't tell nobody about it. She immediately called police, made a report, even had an officer drive her to a clinic for a rape kit. A few days passed, no follow-up. That's when she started her own investigation on Facebook. Asking the community, that if they knew this guy and, you know, something ever happened to them. The responses were immediate. Lots of people were coming out saying that he was known for being a nasty guy, for touching women, for molesting people. My impression was, oh my God, it's been happening so long and nobody has came forward, you know. He started massaging me from my neck down. Guadalupe Navarro responded to the post saying her alleged assault was just hours before Stephanie's. All of a sudden, I felt him touching my private area. He kept going lower and lower until he reached my buttocks. Socorro Ramirez says it happened to her in October 2018. He got his hand in between my legs and touched me sexually on my genitals. The three women met. Stephanie convinced them it was time to take action. So we can get this guy arrested and make justice for what he did. ABC 15 has learned another person has now joined the three women, filing a report against this man. But Phoenix police told them at the time there wasn't enough probable cause to even bring him in for questioning. Were they waiting for him to actually beat me up, kill me? kidnapped me. In the case of Guadalupe, she says she waited for over two months. She never heard from a detective. She was never even questioned by police. Fed up, she showed up at the detective's office to demand someone speak with her. It's frustrating. It's been a long time and they're not giving us any solutions. Days after her visit, a detective finally took her statement. They should have arrested him, questioned him. And they haven't done none of that. And while they waited. Well, then we just noticed that he wasn't um, around. Neighbors say the man moved out of the Phoenix home where the four women claim the assaults happened. They let him go. You know, now who knows where he's at. So what's taking so long? Stephanie says police blame the delay on a language barrier. It's kind of hard to get a detective that can translate to us. She worries for the victims whose first language isn't English and fears some might just give up. Once they don't find a response or they don't hear that the case is moving forward or anything, I think they just let it go. But not Stephanie. I won't feel myself until I know something's been done or he's arrested. Some of you have got to be asking why uh, haven't we identified the alleged suspect in this case? That's because Phoenix PD will not confirm his identity, despite all of these women giving the exact same name. Police tell us they do not have enough probable cause to issue an arrest warrant. They also confirm they have never spoken with the man. One of the women in our story, Stephanie, told us she notified police in June that the man may be moving out of state. We were recently able to track down some of his family members who say that is true. According to Stephanie, detectives say her case will be referred to the county attorney once it's complete.